All right, pilots, gong us down, thumbs up. We're going live with the tone in less than five. Hey, it's your buddy Ken. I'm here in Memphis, and uh, I'm enjoying my very first Tiny Hawk indoor drone race. This is the guy that invited me here. This is Chris Jacks. Hey, Chris. What's up? How you doing, man? I'm doing. I'm, I'm interrupting his, his groove. They're practicing right now. Hey, who are you? I am Alec Lunsford, Lundy FPV. Thanks for having me out here today. Thanks for coming, Ken. So what was the event today? Uh, well, the event today, 901 FPV, which is our local chapter here in Memphis, Tennessee. Uh, we hosted a race at our local university, University of Memphis, at the FedEx Institute of Technology. Um, it was a typical race, but we were also testing some RFID um, yeah, sensors. That's really cool. Yeah. And I spoke with the guy that's running that, the yeah. college. It's pretty interesting technology. My name is Kevin Barrisso. I am a professor over in the Department of Engineering Technology here at the University of Memphis. And what are you doing? So one of my areas of interest is RFID, radio frequency identification. Uh, the hardware we're playing with now is passive, 900 megahertz. And so there are no batteries involved. It's a thin light tag uh, used heavily in the supply chain. So for tracking pallets of goods in a warehouse, tracking whether or not the right uh, item or container is being put on or off of a truck. Right. And at the same time, we can be used for odd and fun things like this where we're trying to determine when a drone goes past and being able to then trigger an event. For example, changing the height of the gate or blasting confetti at them or uh, we were jokingly saying fire. Okay, so this is, this is something that will be fitted to a drone, just a little RFID Correct. tag. Not how much does it weigh? How many? It's a paper tag, so paper. it pretty much next to nothing. Okay, so it won't affect the flight of the drone at all. It shouldn't. Uh, we we tried tying them on and hanging, letting them hang, uh, but it was impacting the flight characteristics just enough to cause a problem. So we found if we took one of the tag styles and it's a long thin strip, it's about half an inch tall by four inches wide, and okay. we can strap it up across over the top of the camera, and it seems to be out of the way. It's not being interfered with sufficiently by the drone, but I can still pick it up with my equipment. Cool, and how is that gonna help the, the FPV community in the, in the indoor racing? So, make uh, timing more accurate? It, it potentially could be used for timing. Uh, one of the things is it makes it much easier to identify the drone, so as the drone comes by, each tag has its own ID, and we can display it, we can have a picture associated with it. And so for the audience, uh, if you think back to the failed experiment in hockey, where they had the tags and the pucks, because oh, so yeah. the puck is moving really fast, right. these drones are moving really fast, yeah. it's really hard for the audience to see things. Now they can see, oh hey, drone four went by, drone seven went by, this driver went by, right. without having to necessarily be able to hear the announcer. Um, it also will allow for more of a dynamic and interactive uh, course, in, in theory, so that now it's, it's more challenging for the drivers, but the, the audience can see what's happening and why it's happening much more easily. Okay, wonderful. And I do want to thank uh, Alien Technology, who's provided all the hardware we're using today. Uh, it was all very generously donated from them. What kind um, of hardware are you using? It is a passive 900 megahertz spread spectrum uh, RFID reader. It's uh, uh, We're using the F800 uh, in, in our testing today. And, and the antennas we're using are from a company called Time7 out of New Zealand, uh, also very generously donated by them. Awesome. Well, thank you very much for, for talking with me. Yep. I appreciate it. Thanks a bunch.
That door jumped out at you, man. <laughs> hey, good job, man. Thank you. Good job. Um, it seemed like that one door jumped out in front of you? Yes. Uh, someone needs to watch out for that door because... So that a door is a loose cannon. Yes. Yeah. This is just fantastic. I love this thing. It is. How is there not thousands of people just lining the, the track? I don't know because this was on Meetup and uh, I guess very few people found out about it. How would people find out about it? How could they get involved? I will put a link in the description of this video so that everyone can join up if they happen to be in Memphis. When's the next one? Uh, I think the 24th of uh, this month. Awesome. I'll take a look. See you there. But you know what the downside is? What? That's no audio. No, but I do. Oh! Yeah, 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 yeah. Nice. Yeah. And I'm wearing down his battery, so here you go. Hey, no worries. Thanks, man. That's all I got to charge it for. <laughs> yeah. So this was a lot of fun for me. This is my first time at an event like this. Oh, cool. I was surprised that it wasn't better attended by, like, spectators. Yeah. It's such an exciting thing to see. It is. And everybody can tune in to their favorite racer and take a ride around the course. Uh, how would we get more people to be interested in this thing as far as spectators and not just flying. I think I think a lot of it just uh, is word of mouth. I mean, this is our first event at this location too this year. So I think we're gonna have at least two or three more that I know of um, currently scheduled. So I think just as we go forward, um, just more word of mouth, people say like, oh, I went to that, it was really, really cool. And so they wanna come back and do it again. Um, I think advertising, sharing this stuff out on social media will help us. Um, one of the things we're going to try to do at our next race is actually have all the, all the uh, feeds also where, you know, the, the spectators can just look up on a screen and see all the feeds. And, and you guys don't care if people just come and they want to learn about FPV? I mean, that's kind of what I did not. today. Absolutely not. Um, in fact, for us, this kind of season, we, we're primarily like a five-inch racing scene. But this season, we kind of use to bring in new people into the hobby every year. And we've done that for four years now. So yeah. every year we get, we go from, you know, like 15 people or something like last season, we ended up with like 15 people attending our races. And then we had our tiny hawk season, which was during the winter. And we were getting, you know, 20 plus pilots at every single race. Thanks for your patience with a, a, an old photography drone guy. I just, I do want to mention <laughs> that I ran this race on the microphone, running the timing system, yep. and still finished first place. So yep. just got just to throw that Even out Even though there. he's in control of the, the gate, the yeah. buttons, right? The yeah. finish line. Yeah, well, I, didn't, I didn't do anything shady in didn't, there. Was... No, but I still wouldn't let him be the banker if you play Monopoly with him. <laughs> <laughs> Thanks, man. Thank you. All right. I've noticed something here. And that, that is? And that is that everybody who is flying or is just looking at this has permagrin. I found myself, when I'm looking at the racers in there, I, I'm just smiling. It's just so fun. It's an experience that you have to actually feel it a belief. Yes. It's transcendent. It is. It's not about experience. Yep. Well, that's it from the FedEx Institute of Technology in Memphis, Tennessee. Thanks for watching. Thanks for subscribing. Until next time, book and bye.